uh, many times we already uh, discussed uh, forensic copying, uh, but sometimes the uh, scope of your search warrant may limit you to what is allowed to be collected. Uh, then uh, you may be uh, selective in terms of uh, what you copy and how much information from the original evidence you are going to retain. So, of course, every time you copy uh, less information, um, the advantage is that uh, it may be easier and faster and less expensive in terms of uh, time and space um, that you have to spend. Uh, but the disadvantage, of course, is the possibility of overlooking uh, some, some evidence. Uh, so that's just something that uh, also you need to be uh, concerned about in stages of uh, collecting and preservation of your evidence. And of course, copying everything is, a, is the most uh, typical uh, situation for uh, criminal investigations. Um, in civil litigations, um, probably selective copying is more popular because otherwise it'd be just huge volumes of information that you have to copy and retain. And uh, uh, even that would require tremendous effort uh, to add uh, uh, possibly uh, terabytes of storage uh, to your case. Uh, so uh, computer intruders and sophisticated computer criminals uh, use uh, programs known as rootkits. So originated on Unix and later uh, started to appearing on Windows, which is a very popular um, user platform uh, for both home use and businesses. Uh, so the rootkits replace uh, components of the operating system. Okay, so that, that's, that's the definition of the root key. Uh, components of the operating system um, are replaced and they become active and they start acting uh, as those components but also doing some sort of malicious activity on the system. And uh, important uh, feature of rootkits is they, they're actually hiding themselves uh, and uh, become uh, as invisible as possible on the computer. So trusted copies of the system commands have to be used when you're running a um, um, collection of uh, live system analysis, such as list of uh, network uh, connections, uh, uh, collecting uh, random access memory, um, and uh, collecting list of processes of running programs. So this uh, means that what you need to do is that you have to uh, use your own portable media to be able to execute uh, your own command uh, utilities um, as opposed to running command utilities on the system that's running. Okay, so instead of native commands, you want to run your own commands. And also ba ba based on your access and based on the presence of these rootkits, they can actually be a program to conceal or destroy uh, the evidence uh, and uh, may uh, render um, findings uh, very problematic. So we talked about forensic copying on bitstream copy or, or copy one by one um, all of the information. Uh, when we collect hard drives and other media containing um, information. So um, that, of course, indicates duplication of everything. And we already know that it is very heavily bound to generating um, secure hash uh, fingerprints, such as MD5, SHA-1, SHA-2, uh, to be able to preserve the initial state of that media and be able to recompute that to identify the integrity uh, and validate uh, the copy that we make. So some of the utilities that uh, could be used is, of course, FTK Imager. Uh, there's also InCase Imager uh, that is available. There's also WinHex um, um, binary editor that is capable of doing uh, bitstream copies. And there's also Unix DD utility, and there may be a lot more of these utilities, but these are typically used by forensic community. Now, it's also important to sanitize the disks uh, that you use, your own forensic workstation on forensic server disks, where you store uh, the collected evidence, the copies of the collected evidence. So if you uh, basically uh, what uh, I'm talking about is that if you have uh, the actual evidence drive, right? So this is the, the evidence that you collected and you're just about to make a copy. You're definitely going to use a larger space. OK, 
okay because you want to be able to accommodate all the information here and you want the larger device to be uh, to be used for the target and normally if you can afford to dedicate the space to your case the case that you're investigating so basically you take all of this information uh, found in partitions uh, of the hard drive here and be able to store it here but before you make this forensic copy what you want to do is to sanitize all the space here by simply writing all zeros it's it's a very typical situation where you just basically write um, zeros to every sectors uh, to every sector uh, present on this target device that you are going to use as a forensic copy so forensic wipe program uh, again this could be um, this could be uh, ftk imager or this could be uh, our uh, own utility uh, to wipe uh, the target uh, space uh, with all of the uh, with all zeros so zero is a very typical type of uh, forensic wipe that you would want to be using you also want to document the serial number of forensic drives um, and the date of sanitation basically you just need to keep uh, track and record everything uh, of your standard proceedings so that you can just promptly and clearly report on your actions and uh, sometimes you may be questioned whether you did something or didn't do something and the best answer to that challenge is just to say that I do it the same way every time I process my uh, cases okay so that clears uh, path of any kind of um, other other uh, suspicion or other uh, challenging questions regarding your uh, policy and procedure it is also highly advisable that uh, when you uh, successfully make your forensic copies that you actually make and preserve more than one uh, possibly multiple copies so you may have a copy of the uh, evidence on your own forensic workstation where you're using your own software to analyze drives uh, but also you may have um, a forensic uh, file storage server where you store securely um, copies of the digital evidence so that's just a common procedure as well just to maintain multiple copies and of course uh, verification should be applied to every copy and every time you begin to use that copy you also begin with verification of um, secure hash algorithm uh, computation and make, make sure that it matches the original uh, during the collection also very uh, typical uh, setup of a forensic uh, lab uh, doing uh, digital evidence examination is the actual forensic workstations uh, that you have um, available to your examiners are actually disconnected from the public internet uh, you may be still be you may still be using the intranet connections uh, to your uh, forensic storage servers and the internal configuration but uh, not the public internet to avoid any kind of uh, outside attacks on your network 